It's sex positive. It's eco-friendly. There's a lot of energy. They're proving that this stuff can be cool and it's not just for gross hippies. Hello, and welcome to the Euro What, episode number 149 for the week of March 21st, 2022. I'm Ben Smith, and I'm joined today by Mike McComb. Hey, Mike. Hello. And our special guest, Meredith Clark. Hi, Meredith. Hi, guys. We are a group of Americans trying to make sense of the Eurovision Song Contest, and this week we'll be starting our reviews of the first semifinal. Meredith, welcome back to the show. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. It is wonderful to have you back. And as soon as we realize that uh, while we are dealing with sort of the, the nebulous what is the running order going to be that Latvia nicely slaps into the first little group of songs we'll be talking about today. And I am excited because, as I was telling a friend the other day, not a ton has caught me as hard as those opening lines. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The internet got a whiff of those in January, and we were off to the races. How was your selection season? Like, how how do you engage with selection season usually? I have a couple finals that I always end up paying attention to. Obviously, Supernova, that's a, a big one for me. That's Latvia. The And then, yeah, some Melody Festival and I little I did some some Iceland stuff. Mostly, I've just been carefully following, looking to see who's been getting selected and then immediately listening to the songs and watching the videos uh, and uh, sort of slowly pulling together my, my bracket. So I'm not quite as dedicated as uh, you both are, but I'm prepared, I think, for uh, for the best parts. I, I think I know who's not making it through to the to the final, I, which is going to be interesting this year. <laughs> yes, taking a list, listen to the songs in their grouping. Like I haven't really been doing that during the season. Like every song has been in a vacuum, and it's like, oh, these all have to interact with each other now, and. It sounded real weird. Like, this is a kind of wild set that we're going to be talking about today. <laughs> I am starting to understand the people on Twitter who have been paying attention to things in the context of one another and are like, this is a weird batch of songs. I'm like, I now understand where they're coming from. Yeah. It is a really weird batch of songs. I am very curious how things are going to play out in the semifinals. Watch how people, like, how the, the performances go. I guess the combination of Monoskin winning with rock, meaning everybody is now trying to copy that and everything else. It just, I just don't know how you're going to do a running order that actually feels dynamic because there's just so many, I don't know. I, I The ballads really threw me this year. I have not been feeling them. Is there anything that you're particularly rooting for? Not really, honestly. I want to be able to root for Italy, even though obviously they don't want to win because I love Hamoud, but ugh, it's so drippy. I can't say that I'm rooting for any of the songs that feel like they are from the early 90s, like dance music, like anything that sounds vaguely like a song that the real McCoy might have recorded, (laughs) (laughs) which is Israel definitely sounds like somebody was listening to too much Crystal Waters before uh, they went into the studio. (laughs) Oh, I listened to the revamp for the first time today and just I I'm so glad that I have a few more weeks to compose my thoughts on that one. <laughs> so I'm mostly actually curious how it's going to go with the politics of everything because of the war and because of how much people seem to be bumping up against like don't be political, you know, because I'm that kind of nerd. Is the EBU going to try and say that they can't support Ukraine in the arena? Like what the hell? How is that going to even happen? Because I just can't imagine them getting away with saying they're going to find people like they did when they were in in Israel. Just thinking of how Ukraine has been at the top of the bookies table for the last couple yep. of weeks. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you know, winning Eurovision is probably the last thing Ukraine needs right now on top of everything else. Like there, there's yeah. just that could introduce a whole slew of problems. I'm glad that we're going to have a little bit of time before we get to talk about that one, uh, just to (laughs) see how, like, hopefully things settle by then. That may be very optimistic on my part. I'm rooting for Latvia, but not because I think they deserve to win, just because, like, they're so funny. And I can talk more about that when we actually get into the songs. Let's not delay that too much longer, then. 
Today, uh, we are going to be looking at five songs, uh, Albania, Bulgaria, Latvia, Lithuania, and Moldova. Again, we don't have a running order yet, so we're just kind of handling the first semifinal in the alphabetical order we currently have them. That feels like a nice, fair way to do it. And again, it gave us a nice way to slice this up so that we could chat with you about Latvia. Yeah, and I'm, I am appreciate it greatly because it is one of the things that I know more about than almost anything else. <laughs> mm-hmm. It just Yes, yeah, so as a person who, who definitely has things that they're ready to have as their specialist subject on Mastermind, should that ever come over to the U.S., I'm fully here to, to enable that. Oh, absolutely. Let's dive in and let's start out with Albania, uh, who are sending Ronella and Secret. So Albania's process is Festivali Ikengas, which happened in December. Uh, Ronella won then. Uh, she started to c- gain popularity in Albania in 2013 and competed in Kenga Mayika a few times. Her debut album came out in March 2021. She has some great online presence in terms of the Twitter. Like She has described her music as perfect to send to an ex after 2 a.m. when you were already finished all the alcohol in a club. With a great photo, by the way. With a, yeah, just like just, <laughs> yes, that that is the caption for a very nice selfie. Very good at the internet. She is currently forty eighth in popularity on fansbirthdays dot com for people born in Albania. Uh, number twenty for singer born in Albania, and twelve bo- for born in Tirana, Albania. <laughs> just got to drill down in that data, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I am also now very curious who the eleven other people born in Tirana count as have to look that up more <laughs> i enjoyed this song i thought i liked it more than i expected to because as i was saying before i'm not necessarily feeling the the ballads but i could see this one actually having a pretty you know having a pretty good performance i would hope so and i'm curious what she's going to do with the english lyrics that they apparently are adding into the song for the final she had mentioned that like she wanted to do this in english because she just likes it better in english and <laughs> um i'm kind of struggling with this one because this the version that's out now is a revamp of what she was doing in festival e congress which had some english in it uh but it, it had it was kind of more I, I would say like 75 25 albanian english there was a little bit more of a build or it felt like there was a little bit more of a story going on in the original version but i think the original version was also four minutes so like was going to need to get cut uh regardless this one feels a little bit more like in the vein of uh cleopatra and mata hari and like what azerbaijan's been doing the last couple of years which i don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing but it's just like oh it feels like it's lost a little bit of the albanian-ness that it had originally sure but i also I guess that's why I think it's kind of okay, because I'm thinking about, all right, how is this going to entertain? I feel like the revamp, the shorter version does give you, it feels more like a pop song than a cultural statement, which sometimes can be good and sometimes can be bad. So I think a lot is going to depend on how it ends up being staged. Albania is one that is on my list of, I I think it'll make it through to the final. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think Albania, like thinking of it, just what you you had said about a a pop song versus cultural statement i feel like festivali ikengas is very much like a cultural statement finder rather than a pop song finder like the whole point is that this is this is albania's national song contest and eurovision is sort of secondary right it's nice because this is sort of like the ethno banger i have been wanting albania to send for a few years (laughs) but because like they've had some in the mix but like the albanian part of the jury has always voted them very low because they they there's this whole cultural heritage thing that they're very that they're also they also consider very important. Something is slightly off with the revamp for me as well. And again, I think they had to cut it down from like three forty eight to three minutes. So like that's just forty eight seconds of stuff that just needs to be on the floor. But structurally, it feels weird in that like there's a lot of dance break time and like it's missing like a bridge or a repeat of the chorus or something. I just realized the song that it reminds me of a little bit in its weirdness. 
Not Alone by Aram MP3 from a million years ago. Not in the actual songness of it, but in the way that you're kind of like, wait, you're going to have all of this build up and then there's this, but it doesn't, It I can see where it doesn't totally hang together in that way. It feels like there was a longer song that there should have been more payoff to it. So I, I can definitely see that. But I'm hopeful because it would be fun to see an Albanian with a lot of charm and presence running around. Yes, I think that is what I'm most excited about with this entry. <laughs> like, I cannot wait to see what she's like in Turin and just interacting with everybody and just uh, running amok in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> she's going to bring the party. Yes. I want her to be what Hurricane was last year. <laughs> yeah, and I think she's definitely positioning herself to fill that role. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other thoughts on Albania? No, I've got lots of things to say about Bulgaria, so I'm ready to move yeah. on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Good, because I'm not sure I do. Uh, <laughs> The next entry we'll be chatting about is Bulgaria's entry, Intention, by Intelligent Music Project. Intelligent Music was founded by Milan Vrabrevsky, uh, who's a Bulgarian medical doctor and philanthropist who started this production company with the mission of popularizing contemporary Bulgarian music and culture. One of the projects that came out of it was the Intelligent Music Project, so good name. Uh, they are a supergroup uh, that was founded in 2012. They were internally selected back in November, which is crazy early for Eurovision season, and they had the first song to drop for the 2022 season. Some of the members of the group uh, currently include lead singer Ronnie Romero, who's been part of a number of heavy metal bands, uh, Stoyan Yankulov, uh, who has been a previous representative for Bulgaria uh, back in 2007 and 2013. And another vocalist, Slavin Slavchev, uh, won X Factor Bulgaria back in 2014. One of the things that they tout is that this is a group that has worked with a lot of very popular rock groups uh, over the decades. Yeah, they've got a strong pedigree. Do they have a strong song? Uh, Meredith, what, what are your thoughts on it? <laughs> I, you know, I said I have, I have lots of, of thoughts about this. They're not nice, but I do have thoughts. This song felt like an original that I would hear from a rock band playing at a county fair in Wisconsin. Yes. Yes. It really felt like, you know, they've ha they're having a great set. Everybody is rocking out. There are plastic cups full of Miller Lite just flying and they br they decide they're going to bust out an original but it sounds a little bit like they're covering a skid row b-side <laughs> and i really <laughs> though it the reason why this struck a chord with me is because i've been to a lot of county fairs not because I think they have any chance whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, 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 no. no. Just like, I, I am immediately, I have been to the tractor pole. I have seen all of the 4-H club seed art. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> you have eaten something fried and on a stick. Yeah. Uh, yes. And now it is time to watch the band that is a touring, like they probably do have decent pedigrees, but they're playing, yeah, it is just absolutely generic, like 80s rock, which doesn't surprise me. I am well familiar with the fact that a lot of Eastern Europe is still living in 1991 when it comes to rock music. That just has never changed. Yeah. I mean, for me, I listened to a podcast uh, again with this, which is currently doing an episode by episode rewatch of Melrose Place. And one of the topics that comes up every so often is like, since they're watching these on DVD, often there is music replacement in there because they couldn't clear the rights for an R.E.M. song or Gin Blossoms. <laughs> I literally or made that exact point to my sister when I was talking about this. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah like I can, this, yeah. this sounds like the replacement track that they would use because they couldn't get the rights for whatever original song was playing on there. And it's just B-roll of people in their early 90s fashions, like walking down Sunset Boulevard or something. So. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, well, and just to continue on the county fair trend, this feels like... Like again, you've gone to the county fair. This is the big name on the on on the lineup. But due to the Truth and Music Act, it is like technically one or two members of that band as in their original lineup. But like the rest is just guns for hire. Yes, and I think that the their official photo gives strong energy to that as well. These are some 
journeyman professionals just out here playing a type of music that is popular in a very specific niche that is not all that original. Given the speed with the, that this announcement was made and that they, they announced this and then like the day after, like, here's their song. They didn't even give it like any buildup. Typically, a country would be like, wanting to get ahead of the game will be like, this is our artist, and we, we're really excited about their song, and then just we'll go radio silent for two months. But Bulgaria was like, we're so excited. Here's everything. And like, it's always interesting to see the first song and then to see all of the 39 to 40 other songs emerge, because like, this one does stick out, <laughs> uh, but it's just not in a great way. And uh, over like, the, the course of the last week, uh, I don't know if you've been paying attention to this, Mike, but like the the Bulgarian Eurovision Twitter is just getting more and more unhinged. Yes, <laughs> and just like I, I I'm trusting that because this band has worked with so many rock professionals, they are not actually just like going on cameo and paying all of these rock legends to talk about how great Intelligent Music Project is, but also they could just be going on cameo. True. I appreciate this entry because I think this is like this is a popular style of music in the sense that like I mean dad rock it's a thing it's not my thing but it is some people's thing and it's not a genre that's typically represented at eurovision so i appreciate its presence here even though i don't think it's going to do well Let's say, i feel like it has not been at eurovision since 2013 for a reason because I'm, I'm thinking of like the last time slovakia entered oh right oh. which was very like this same specific vein of like 80s hair metal ish mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah I mean, I, I think, especially with the chorus, I found myself wishing, and I know this is very silly, but I really wanted the song to have like 80% more Jim Steinman vibes. Like if they had made the chorus a little more meatloafy, I would be much more into it. Yes, I, I, I actually fully agree with that. It's, it's like this needs more bombast. Exactly. This, this needs yeah. the, that particular weird strain of like Jim Steinman throwing like a full pipe organ and a choir at this. <laughs> Yes, thank you. I this is that would be my dream. I mean, maybe maybe it. their staging will be a pipe organ in the center of the stage, and it catches on fire, like <laughs> up to the trope, you know. <laughs> As I'm thinking about like what would this what would this song plus a pipe organ plus a cor- chorus be? I'm just like Ben. You just want to listen to Sisters of Mercy's "This Corrosion" again, <laughs> which is a t- completely different song from this. So apparently, my fix for this is just what if Bulgaria sent a different song. Because this feels just like such a weird pivot from what they had been doing. They had been very on trend and good for them for going their own way. But also, Bulgaria, why? I gotta say, it's it's just gotta be the, the rock thing. I think they just, somebody decided they were seizing on it. And if he's a philanthropist and CEO, he must have had some decent pull. I think it is just seizing on the rock thing as well, plus budget issues like i i have a feeling that the reason that it was announced last year was just because oh it's still fiscal year 2021 so we can have whatever we didn't spend on victoria's staging go towards promoting this Talk about Latvia, everybody. Uh, uh, Supernova was great this year. Supernova was fantastic this year. Yeah. I am just delighted that C.D. Zani's Eat Your Salad actually won. Yeah, I think this was one where I was actually worried that the Latvians would get self-conscious at the last second. I was fully ready for them to be very excited about this and then just like at the last minute swerve and pick Aminata because Aminata is great. Uh, she's done great work for them before and would have completely been fine with it, but like was just so happy in the in the moment that we are getting uh, this adult Sesame Street song. <laughs> I I was thinking of Schoolhouse Rock because of the message, but Sesame Street also works. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it, it feels very in the vein of of like Avenue Q, which admittedly as a whole has not aged particularly well, but it like it feels like this fits in. It does. I mean, I I think that. The whole song has a good message. It's sex positive. It's eco-friendly. There's a lot of energy. They're proving that this stuff can be cool. And it's not just for gross hippies lit that saying 
bake a cake. Hate those hippies. Yeah. So much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are the cool so, hippies. <laughs> Yeah, these are the cool hippies. Well, it's not just for hippies anymore. I I love it. I love their bright colors. I love the nerdiness, the like almost MC Paul Barman kind of rapping that goes with it. It's so ridiculous and silly and it's so painfully white. Yes, yes. (laughs) I adore it. Yeah, um, (laughs) which the the other thing I love is that CD Zani, I'd not realized this when I was just like really excited about this when they they first got announced, but like CD Zani translates to other boys. Which is just wonderful. Chef's kiss. uh, And then it's just also, it's a pun on citizens. Uh, The thing I did not know is that they were formed at a songwriting camp in Riga in March of 2020. Uh, The previous iteration, Citizens LV, formed in 2010 as like a synth pop band. Hmm. Going back to what you were saying about Bulgaria, being at the state fair and performing for a very particular niche of fans, this group kind of reminds me of bands that perform at the various street festivals that happen in Chicago. And there are a couple of bands where it's just like, your street festival has hit the big time, like if like 16 candles is performing at it. And like, they're a local band, but they're very popular. They're very fun band but it's like still kind of regional and not but doesn't really have an interest in going like full-on national if that makes sense and i guess i'm trying to like flip this into be like the positive version of the state fair performing act where it's like so yeah yeah. i understand that and i um the madison version of that is a band called steely dane they're a 16 piece porn and funk outfit that is dedicated to the music of steely dan and uh donald fagan And they are the big time in this city. So I I get it. Mm -hmm. Even adding the... And I I think it's just fun. There's part of what has been really frustrating is I haven't been as moved by some of the bangers. I've been disappointed by the ballads. I just want something that makes me giggle. And watching these guys dance around and fake play their instruments and sing about reusable bags and glass jars and veggies, like... I need that in my Eurovision. Otherwise, it doesn't feel like I'm really getting uh, what I want out of it. It's part of a very balanced Eurovision diet. And yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, and just all of us talking about our, our local brass bands that make us smile. Uh, there is an annual festival in my neck of the woods that is nothing but uh, what are called activist street bands, uh, where it's typically small, mostly brass stuff. And like, I feel like this would also fit right in there. Yeah, I guess yeah. what we're all hoping for is that they do like a national like street festival tour like next yes. summer. Like I I would so be in favor of that. <laughs> uh-huh. And also just like again, I like that we give the, we give their sax man a dance break. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. it's been, it's been so long since we've had an epic sax man at Eurovision and we we deserve a little bit of a treat. Last year I feel like we kind of got it with the roop with the the bearded guy dancing but he was just dancing it wasn't it's not the same it's you need the sax to really like bring the whole thing together I love this song and just appreciate the lyrical gumption that's going on the entire time and like I do like that it does feel like they've had like a very stern talking to you by the EBU about what they can and cannot put on the screen yeah <laughs> <laughs> When I was explaining my excitement for this song uh, to a friend, I was showing them this entry and Norway's entry as sort of like the wild cards that had recently been announced, uh, and then realized that I needed to show them the semifinal performance for them to understand. Because like without the without the them putting it on screen, uh, you kind of don't know what's going on in the first lines, which I did kind of know that the EB was not going to let that fly. <laughs> but, yeah. but also just like buried in like the second verse is like some stuff that's probably about as adult as, as yeah. sort of that yeah. opening line <laughs> that i feel is just like whizzing past the the ebu's uh standards of practices team well i i also think and i know you guys have talked about this extensively at different times it's really fun to it's just fun that the song is in english and is actually like functional and hangs together like they wrote the song to be about this thing it they're you know it's silly but they're not just rhyming nonsense words like everything actually coheres and i uh it's always fun when you're like okay yeah this is just a straight up english language song instead of feeling like it was put through the swedish rhyming dictionary computer and i think like you i also deeply appreciate its whiteness (laughs) <laughs> like, like I, I have, I have called this group "Oops, All Mark Ronsons." Yeah, because <laughs> it just rem- it reminds me of Uptown Funk, but Oops. 
Oh, that's a very good way to put it. They are one of the ones that I'm excited to see interact with everybody else in Turin this year. Yeah, they they are definitely going to bring the energy. They're, like they're going to be so fun at all the pre parties. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there are going to be. I imagine there will be lots of um, Man- Monoskin Instagram posts with these guys in it. Oh like, yeah. I yeah. think they are all going to. I think they're going to be hanging and having a pretty epic time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited. Go Latvia. I love you guys forever. Lithuania uh, had their Pabandam is now yo process again uh, for the third year. The group were not in it, so we have a different winner this time. It was Monica Louis and her song Sentimentai. Monica studied at the Berklee College of Music in Boston and was based in London for a while, uh, released her first album in 2015. Uh, Since then, she has been a judge on The Voice of Lithuania and was also a judge on The Masked Singer. And that was right before this year's edition of Pabandam is Now Yo, so may have been riding some momentum from that. Sentiment High has reached number one on the Lithuanian charts, so it's a pretty popular track. Ben, what what do you think of this one? I just keep watching the Pabandam is Now Yo performance just because Monica has such great stage presence. This song has just like such a nice vibe and such a different vibe from like what the Roop was doing for Lithuania before. Mm Mm-hmm. And like, there's also just sort of the the language nerd in me who is just very excited. This is the first entry in Lithuanian since like the early 2000s. That still blows my mind. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Meredith, what do you think of this one? I, I like it. It hasn't dug its claw like claws into me yet, which is okay. There are a couple of not terribly good Lithuanians that I still really want to see win the contest at different times. So, actually, sending somebody who's competent like while a smart move for the contest uh didn't you know thought oh come on guys i can just give it to me and i once just yes. once like- <laughs> yeah just like just like, <laughs> just like as a treat can we have like a me and i or a good twosome song yes and so that i think that's playing into why it hasn't hasn't yet settled in but you're right her stage presence is fantastic and i think that she it does have a it does have a good vibe i think it'll end up being one of those songs where it it doesn't hit me until I see it during the final. And then it ends up being a song that I listen to legitimately, like on a random playlist, um, which is its own type of Eurovision song. So we'll see. She has also said that she's going to be rethinking the performance for Turin, which is what is giving me pause right now is because like the Pabandam is now your performance just like has has this great slinky energy because it's like a her in essentially like that disco ball dress. Yeah. Just commanding the stage. I'm just like, you guys don't need to completely rethink this. You know, sometimes all you need is a really great dress. I mean, you mentioned Aminata. She was on the stage by herself with a big dress when she sang Love Injected, and that ruled. So I would love it if she if she kept it simple. I think that would be that would be a really solid move. I agree. And, and, and Love Injected was what came to mind for me when she mentioned the restaging of it. It's like, oh, yeah, like if you just kind of recreated that performance, I think that would work and <laughs> and still in a positive way. But I guess like all that really would need to be added is like maybe a little movement from like one part of the stage to the other and that's it. Or like maybe a little less movement from the camera. But yeah, like I, I think this song is in really good shape right now, especially compared to a lot of the other female soloists that are in this semifinal like this is pretty much the only one that's not like a guitar ballad i think it's it's going to stand out just because it's not going to get confused with a lot of the other female soloists yeah and i think you know given that there are so many i i think this has potential to do really well shocking she's a real musician you know (laughs) she's another one who i'm excited to see like interacting with the press and the various interviews and stuff that happen as part of the eurovision backstage stuff like I, I keep thinking back to the final of Pabandam is Now Yo, where she's like, all she wanted to do was just chat with everybody else. And they, the camera kept cutting to her. It's like, oh, wait, I got to look at the camera and wave. Okay. All right. What were, what were you saying? And- <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think 
clearly we're, we're, it seems like the backstage stuff has a lot of potential this year. I think we're see, we're going to have a lot of, of performers that make the whole experience really fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's nice that as things, as attention is expanding again, that we've got a lot of people that can really shine when given a chance to, to talk. Yeah, they, they will be keeping the Eurovision social media team quite busy this year, I think. So uh, yes. <laughs> good luck, everybody. <laughs> 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 The final song that we're going to be talking about today is Moldova's entry, Trenuletul, by Zobzidub and Frati Avilyab. So this is not Zobzidub's first rodeo. Uh, they have repped Moldova in 2005 and 2011, and as their press kit says, uh, from their humble beginnings with the Eastern European music scene as a Moldovan folk-influenced ska-punk band, they simultaneously layered a mix of highly innovative world music with electronica dance and alt-rock muscle without losing sight of their core roots. Which is a great sentence, just in general. You're going to be describing a band that you can't really pronounce. (laughs) And I think that is exactly how I would describe them, just based on their Eurovision entries alone. So (laughs) they nailed the brief. Yes, I. which I think that's why I'm kind of struggling with this one, is that I've heard previous Zabzi Dub songs, and like 2005 definitely has the ska punk influence, 2011 definitely has the alt-rock muscle, and then this song is just all folk all the time, and like, this is the kind of Moldova I love, and yet it's like not my favorite of this particular band's Eurovision entries. That, you know, that's interesting because I really liked it, but I've also been leaning hard into a lot of like Eastern European folk music just because. So this one really like it got me got my blood pumping when I was listening to it while walking my dog on a spring day. Uh, maybe want to sort of dance around. I Although I it did make me feel like I wanted to polka. It gave me, I was just like thinking back to when my, my grandfather taught me to, to dance the polka when I was like six years old and how much fun I had. And so clearly it's it's a little bit of a Madeline kind of thing for me rather than actual quality of the song. But I think it's really fun. I mean, for this particular genre of Eurovision song, I thought it, it was good, even if it's not their best uh, entry. For me, it's like, I also love that particular kind of vein of folk music but this knowing that like zombie dub usually has more of like a, a rock edge to it and this is just so pure folk from them it's just i think i'm mostly just kind of shocked because like it's not what i expect from this group yeah i think for me like i i expect the staging to be where they bring in the real rock influence i'm expecting their staging to be like delightful and memorable uh simply because like they were the unicycling fairy and the pointy hats back in 2011 so like they know how to stage a song from the very first time that i listened to this track it was like oh this seems like a western themed board in mario party <laughs> so like i'm hoping <laughs> that the staging for this is just like they are on go-karts they are throwing turtle shells at each other and banana peels and it's just that for three minutes and yeah, I think that would get my 12 points. They have told us we are getting a train because the song is about the train from Moldova to Romania. Yeah. And and like the thesis of the song uh, is like trying to be like, hey, Moldova, Romania, maybe we should reunite. And I can't get behind that because then that would mean that we would only get one entry from th- those two countries rather than like a, a Moldovan entry and a Romanian entry. And yeah, I don't know if I, I, I could stand losing that uh, in Eurovision. I mean, it's purely selfish reasons. Yes. <laughs> I'm sure there are plenty of benefits to reuniting, but uh, that, yeah. that would not be one of them. So. Yeah, I guess I'm really, I wonder how that's going to end up playing, like Moldova singing a song about reuniting with Romania. Like, that's not exactly a popular concept at that part of the world at the moment. So, we're, you know, that I, I don't know if that'll actually make any like anyone care, but it does seem, you know, for as fun as the song is, yeah, the lyrical content is a little odd. I don't know. Next thing you know, Russia is going to be in Moldova and then they'll be like, but you said you wanted it. You wanted to reunite with Romania. We're better. Yeah. Uh, I just find this song so hypnotic and I'm I'm not 
all that worried about its chances of qualifying. Like, I, I think it may end up being kind of on the bubble, but I, I think it's on the safe side of the bubble. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's energetic and memorable enough that it's extremely Moldovanness will could like should push it over you know there's always that the risk when you're making a song that's incredibly culturally specific that it's just not going to appeal to enough people but this one I, it does have just enough bang like thump and and energy that with a good staging i think it, it could make it over this is the type of moldovan entry i like where like musically it puts me in mind of like Pasha Parfini's song from 2012 of just being joyous and like really leaning in on like the 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 folk music tradition they have and like I have no doubt they will find a way to engagingly stage this although I do also expect this to get the two slot in the lineup like I I have a very difficult time picturing this anywhere else in the lineup like it needs it needs to be early but it can't open the show so (laughs) yeah that I think that's that's a good call I mean, alternately, is Bulgaria going to get the punishment slot of just like, no. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like four is the is the punishment slot. Like three, four, three four or is four. The, four is the you have angered us. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Is Latvia going to open the show? I could see Latvia opening the show. It's got nice energy. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it's just like, it's, <laughs> it's abrasive uh, at the start. So it's just like, <laughs> well, it's, it's also Twitter. like, it, like an, advantage to, an advantage to it opening the show is testing the anti-booing technology to see if it can completely cut out the sound of thousands of people in the in the arena screaming of the word that has been cut out of the opening of the song yeah yeah because <laughs> <laughs> like the band can't say it but like the however many people are in the arena will be screaming it loudly mm-hmm. oh they will be singing very very loudly yeah. <laughs> I, the, now that you said it i will be very mad if they don't open the show because i can't think of a better way to say hey guys it's eurovision time yeah. Then that line. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Merida, thank you again for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm very excited for for Eurovision, and I'm excited to be able to go back to really just reveling in all of this. It's now we're we're counting down in the real. Where can people find you online? Any anything anything to promote? Any anything to point people to? Uh, at the moment, I can point people to my Twitter account. It's Meredith L. Clark. I am working on a few things, but nothing that is out yet. So I will not plug any of that until it actually happens. But thank you for the opportunity. That's going to do it for this episode of the Euro What. Thanks for listening. The Euro What podcast is hosted by Ben Smith. That's me and Mike McComb. That's me. Show notes are in the description of this episode and on our website at eurowhat.com. If you'd like to contact us, we're at EuroWhat on Twitter, or you can email EuroWhatPodcast at gmail.com. The American Song Contest has just begun, and we are asking, uh, that is ASCing, all sorts of questions about it over on our Patreon. Get our first bonus episode of the series at patreon.com slash EuroWhat. Next time on the EuroWhat, Evan Stewart will be joining us to talk about six more songs from the first semifinal, including Armenia's newly released entry, Snap. Okay, let me just do like a big stretch as I have to do all of the pronunciation. <laughs> I wrote it phonetically for you. <laughs> you did. They, you did. But you did. And still. <laughs>